There is a crime against the Sunnah, though. There's a crime against the Sunnah that I want to warn myself of and all of you of. And that is when you say something is Sunnah and it's not. Or when you say something is Sunnah but you don't really understand how and when that Sunnah was established. So you draw your own conclusions about that Sunnah, that Hadith. The thing about a Hadith is, for example, that the Prophet said it at a certain place. He said it to a certain group of people. He said it to a certain family. And you know when you walk in on someone's conversation and he's already talking to someone, he's not giving a lecture to everybody, he's talking to someone in particular, right? Could it be that he's dealing with a special situation? Could be, right? Now if you don't know that, you would think that he's giving a policy for what? Everyone. So you have to know background. You have to know context for the sunnah. You can't just read the translation of a hadith and say, I know what that means. I know how to apply it. Because that's also unfair to the sunnah of the Prophet It's unfair to not know how it was applied, how it was meant, you know? And so this is actually a big danger because people will make you feel guilty you're not following sunnah. You're not following what, what it, it says right here in Bukhari, right here. But when you ask the question, when was this said? Who was this said to? How was it understood? How was it acted on? What are the other subject matters on this, this same hadith? How do you do it? You know, when I got into this subject, I, I, you know, I, I noticed, I don't go on Facebook and Twitter or whatever. I'll just post something beneficial or something or my team will do it. I don't have time for social media personally. I, they do a good job, alhamdulillah. I think, I don't know. <laughs> you know? But so once in a while, I will, they'll send me some things that people ask and people say, how come you never talk about hadith? I get a lot of that. Why do you only talk about Quran? You know why I do that? Because I love the sunnah so much that I'm scared to talk about it, something that I don't fully, fully grasp. When I have a question about a hadith, I, I literally fly. I, I'll take a flight to a muhadith and sit with them and ask them. Because I, I want to understand it properly. Because it's happened too much, too many times in my own life when I was learning about Islam, I learned about a hadith and I sat in a halaqa and somebody explained it to me and I thought I knew what it meant and later on I found out that was completely wrong. It was completely missing the entire context. And I got so scared that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hear the messenger's words and not be able to decipher. You know, Quran studies I've been doing for 15 years, I kind of know what to do. I know which tafasir to go to, which language sources to go to, which you know, b- uh, books to study. But hadith science is a complicated science. It's a deep science. I don't have the brain cells for it. But there are some people I know that do, alhamdulillah. So I need to take advantage of them. And I do this out of awe and out of appreciation of the people who like they've dedicated 40 years to studying just hadith that's no small task and they, they sit there and then there are people who've, st- who've maybe got a copy of they don't even have a copy of it. they have a google version of like the books of hadith and now they're ready to own the sunnah of the prophet and they compare themselves to these ulama it's so silly it's just silly one of my teachers you know one time he said that he was teaching a hadith and one of those students like one of those Google students sitting in the class, he goes, uh, Sheikh, man qala hadha? who said this hadith? What's your dalil that this is sahih? So the Sheikh says, You know, narrated by so and so, son of so and so, by so and so, and so. You know what happens with the names? So he gives him like 20 names off the top of his head. And he goes, Is that, is that okay? And the student says, Yes. He goes, You idiot, I just named all the students in the class. <laughs> People want to feel like they're No, oh, I, I got the authentic Dalil You don't know what you're talking about You don't know It's so hard for people to accept what they don't know It's so hard I have, you know, may Allah not make me from those kinds of people I have no problem accepting what I don't know And I'd rather go ask someone who spent their life t- studying this stuff and I'd rather, t- I'd, I'd much see more seriously take their opinion and their research and ask them hard questions too than, than, you know, just do Google searches myself. At least, especially when it comes to the Sunnah of the Prophet I think it's a sensitive subject. That's my own view. You don't have to take my view, but that's my own view. And my view of that has become more sensitive because of my study of the Qur'an. Because of its study. So may Allah make us 
really loyal followers of the Sunnah of the Prophet and may Allah Azza wa make it easy for the beautiful Sunnah of the Prophet to become widespread and the misuse of it to become a thing of the past. Barakallahu li wa lakum, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.